13 minutes past eight in a world where there appears to be a general belief that you can't have too many cooking shows. We're getting another cooking show, but if you ask my producer, this is the cooking show to end them all. My Kitchen Rules is coming and the two judges have been named. Ben Bailey is the chef at the Grove in, uh, in, in Auckland and Gareth Stewart is at Soul Bar also in Auckland. Nice to see both of you. Thank you. And congratulations. Yes. Did you ever, um, did you Ben have a, a you know a long standing belief that you should be on television, deserve to be on television, you want to be famous, or did this just sort of organically evolve, as they say? Very organic. Yeah, I never really picked that path for me, but um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, and I honestly used to look at cooking shows and 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 wonder about that about about that path. But I think um, it's just something that happened naturally, and and um, you know, people, these uh, producers and stuff, they came to our restaurant and loved it, and and it just all led from there. You've I got think. a very good restaurant. Yeah, you've got yeah. a very good restaurant. And, and Gareth, what about you? Same for you uh, or no? <clears throat> absolutely. It was always, <clears throat> excuse me, being a chef first. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just glad, I'm glad and happy that it has gone this way. Um, it's never been something I've I've never been chasing fame, mm. um, and so I think it's going to be quite a strange kind of process getting used to that. Um, but we'll 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 always be chefs, I think, first and foremost. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. You you're mates too, aren't you? Yes, we are. Oh, long pause. Hold <laughs> no, on. No, no, sorry. I was <laughs> waiting for on. him. I was waiting for Gareth to talk. Um, no, I mean, we. Gareth was my first friend when I came back from the UK. I was overseas 10 years, and um, I actually applied for a job with Gareth. And um, it, it didn't work out for various reasons. And, and so he was my first chef friend once I returned from overseas after my long stint there. So My first chef friend. Yeah. That sounds oh, so lovely. My so first chef friend. <laughs> you sit around and talk about food <laughs> and the fry pans. You, you cooked a Michelin star restaurant. Yeah, we both have. Yeah, really. Yes, yeah. Do you, what do you make of? Uh, because I'm 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 fascinated by the Michelin star process and whether or not it's worth it. Oh, it's the most credible rating system in the world. Um, it has the most credibility. It's a, a completely anonymous. It's um, phenomenally um, covert. It's just yeah. it's so it's false names. It's everything. It's just so well resourced. And um, do you reckon there are too many Michelin stars being handed out? I went oh, to a no, place. I think in, the standards are just really, got better. really. Yeah, I went to a place in Singapore that I won't name, but it had no, a. Age is different. Ah, yeah. Well, that's what Asia's, about it's all about the money, and we learnt that um, Michael Durth and I, the, the the owner of the Grove, we went to Hong Kong, and um, the rules are different there. It's 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 more controlled. It's more about tourism and stuff like that. And I think that you know you can see Japan and Hong Kong and yeah. Singapore. I mean, why not the rest of Asia? So there's a lot of question marks for me around Michelin there. But if you go to Europe, it's the real deal still. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. All right, and you would agree with that, Gareth? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's like Ben says, it's a very credible credible tool. Credible, mm. sorry, um, way of judging a restaurant. So, yep. yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of other guides that are kind of trying to muscle in, like the San Pellegrino top 50 or top yeah. 100 in the world and stuff. But I mean, they 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 focus more on the real ultra modern molecular type restaurants, where the Michelin's kind of a bit more conservative and old school. Okay, well, how do you explain then, Gareth, the juxtaposition we seem to have in this country, if not the Western world, between this massive proportion of people eating crap food and getting fat? versus in a television program these extraordinary number of people who are brilliant with food and seemingly spend their life cooking and live to cook oh i don't know i think in this western society um we, this is something that we do you know it's um we we live around food and it's become so popular through what we watch on tv um it's just something we're very much into what do you regular see i watch cooking shows not to cook because i can't cook and I don't want to cook, and I had no interest in cooking. <laughs> but I do the barbecue. I know that that probably disgusts you, but I have. I, but it's just not my thing. And yet I love a cooking show. I love looking at cooking. I love looking at how it's done, how clever it is, all the food, all the ingredients. It's just I will never do it myself. How do you explain that? Um, I think, you know, you've got to love it. You, you, yeah, you love it. But I mean. The cooking shows, it's the pressure of it all and just seeing people come unraveled under pressure. Yeah. And I think people seem, or they, they probably think in their own minds that they're actually quite good cooks. And I think it's quite entertaining seeing them fall apart at times. Mm. Or that, you know, or when they achieve, you know, when they, when they achieve past their expectations, it's, it's great to see as well. But I, I think um, in the end of the day, everyone, everyone has to eat and everyone's interested in food. And people are becoming more educated and they, they want better dining experiences. And we've seen that in this country, haven't we? Absolutely. In terms yeah. of the quality of restaurants and cafes, and most people eat out these days, and certainly more than they ever did and ever used to. Oh, the level of restaurants these days is just 
it's gone up yeah, considerably. Scary. Um, there's restaurants opening up every month, you know. Uh, yeah. So it definitely makes us lift our level in our restaurants. Um, we think about it every day because mm. it's our lives, it's our businesses. And Well, there's your other thing. You see, you're putting your reputation on the line, aren't you? Yeah, Absolutely. we are. Yeah, yeah, we've thought about that deeply, yeah. actually. Mm. Have we made the right decision, Gareth? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because we are chefs first, you know. Yeah. And so tell us about the audition, Gareth. What did you have to do? Do you have to leap through hoops? What did they make you do? Well, we were given a, um, a few lines to learn uh, a few days before. And, uh, you know, as much as you learn them and learn them and learn them, as soon as you get to that thing, they just pop out your head. <laughs> you know, you think you've got it. But um, So we were, we were told to taste some food and to... Um, to Say something about yeah, it. To, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then a menu also to talk about and to um, comment on. And then we got through that first process and then we were called back to do another one with uh, another chef, so there's three of us. Um, and then Ben and I got it. It was, it was pretty pretty easy. Fantastic. Are great chefs born or taught? Oh, you, it's a bit of both, really. I mean, you can see um, a young, like say, for example, you'll see a young guy come in your kitchen, he might be 17, and you can just see the way he or she moves, the way you touch foods, touch food, the way they break an egg, the way they mm. whisk something, or and they've just got it, you know. And it's that kind of je ne sais quoi, that kind of that something, the X factor. Yeah. Um, so I think um, really, really good chefs have to have that. And it's kind of the way they hunch over a bench or hold it. You can see it's just in all in their. Movement. So that's an eight. You can't teach that. Um, but having said that, if you don't, ha- I've seen chefs without that. Um, that X factor, if you like, um, just for sheer hard work, really make it and become awesome. Mm. Um, but I think to become, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, it's a real combination of things and there's a lot of dedication and hard work, especially when you do those hard yards, when mm. you're young, it's very easy with this kind of, I guess, Y generation. Um, these, these kids that, that they, they all, they want it all and they want it all right now. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. It's, it's the same in the broadcasting world. They come out of tech or whatever it is they've oh, gone yeah. to and, and they wonder why they're not on the television and they're not the biggest name in the industry and they're not running the place and earning a million bucks. Exactly, yeah. So, so that's the same in cooking, same presumably no a- matter where absolutely. you go. Absolutely. And, and, and Gareth and I, I will speak for Gareth here, but even sometimes on a real busy night, I'll be I'll have my head in the in the sink washing pots because the dishwasher hasn't showed up. You know, and I think to myself, gosh, am I, am I, is this ever going to end? And, 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 I, and it never is. You know, I don't think as long as you're in the kitchen and as long as you're feel like we finished at almost we finished well after 12 last night i mean we we're both monday night on the stove oh, yeah know. do you funny. go along to the polytechs and the techs and stuff and tell them that and say one well, of the i've got a friend in who's who's a, uh, a lecturer at uh, one of the the colleges and um I mean, he he's he's well aware of I think the the quality of chefs that are coming out, but it's I don't know, it's, people aren't becoming chefs just because they they really want to. Yeah. It's something that they're kind of driven into, I think. Mm. Um, and I think you know, going back on what Ben was saying, I think chefs now are just getting promoted too early, uh, way too early. They come out of college and they're instantly well, they're Sous applying chef, for so. chef to party positions, yeah. and it's it's just not good enough, and it's breaking down what chefs really are yeah. you know from- it's interesting to hear from another industry too because mm. it's the whole it's 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 the general belief that the upside is that good people will always do well no matter what the economic circumstances are if you're good at what you do you will always do well because good people are hard to find exactly is that right yeah simple as that let me ask you a couple of questions who are the, who are the greatest chefs uh heston blumenthal no rate no, him or not no oh yeah he's awesome man he's, he's just he's he's a phenomenon uh self-taught is, um, is that cooking though well, it depends on what you're... Everyone's got their own opinion on that. Mm. It's so subjective. That's the thing about cooking. Um, I mean, he provides an experience that's very unique. Yeah. And there's probably a handful of guys in the world um, that were able to provide that experience. And that's what makes him so special. And, and, and eating food is not just about putting a... You know, cutting a piece of steak and putting it in your mouth—it's the—it's the whole experience mm. from when you arrive in the restaurant door. And I think that the fat duck provide... An, an amazing experience you know but for me i always look to guys like bernard loiseau the guy that was heavily depressed ended up shooting himself um, he was three michelin stars yeah he, amazing and he's got this there's a book out called the perfectionist yeah and it's such an amazing book that's I why i asked book. the question mm-hmm. about the michelin stars because he got there he got and once there. he got there there's nowhere else and, and he thought he was going to lose them and and, yeah. and it still has three stars to this day and he, and he shot himself like 20 years ago so it, it's a phenomenal restaurant and and so people of that era chefs is guy savoir we spoke about yesterday um um all those people that that almost trained um our forebears like Marco Pierre White and yeah. and the people that we worked in, with in London, you know, 
Good stuff. Well, listen, good luck with the program. I'm sure it's going to be a smash hit. If my producer says it's the greatest cooking show, I'll tell you, she, she's always right. Can't go wrong. Cool. Good luck with it. Nice Thanks, to see Mike. you. Thank ben you, Bailey and Gareth Stewart. My Kitchen Rules. It is 8.23.